Come on in, come on in. Yes, it's another edition of the Weekly Entertainment News Podcast. I am your brother, brother Hiram Hakeem, and I'm in the building. Hey, yo, listen, we want to tell everybody thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. We do this thing every Tuesday. Sometimes we might not. Sometimes we might come in between Tuesday. If the news is popping, we do exactly what the newspaper does. We hold the press, we stop the press to inject some credible news and stuff like that. Speaking about credible news, we want to give a shout out to the Reporter newspaper. The Reporter newspaper is Black and Ohio's only. Akron, Ohio's only all black publication owned and ran and edited and then distributed by African Americans, Americans here in um, Akron, Ohio. So we want to give a shout out to them because without them, we wouldn't have this news to talk about. We need to talk about what I'm wearing right now. Big ups to the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, Cleveland's only a couple of minutes away from this particular area. So this is um, Cleveland Browns country. And this is Cleveland Cavs country. We made it to the second round of the playoffs. We play in Boston. Hopefully, we will do our what we have to do. Donovan Mitchell is going to do what he has to do, and we are going to kick some goddamn ass. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, but we might as well do what we came here to do. Let's go, Drizzy. Let's go, Kendrick. Woo! All right. Let's talk about this, man. Everybody is talking about this. There's a lot of different things and a lot of different angles. I could talk about this thing. Who won the battle? Is the battle still in progress? Who is doing good and who is doing great, right? We will talk about at this time of me recording this particular podcast, we will talk about the last joint that Drake dropped. It's, um, well, the last one I heard was the Heart Part 6, okay? Now, in this particular joint, he sound kind of sad to me. I'm going to keep it a buck. I ain't going to spend a lot of time on this, but he sound kind of sad on this as almost remorseful, I mean, you know, remorseful that he didn't even have to uh, speak on the so-called pedophile allegations that's being thrown at him from our brother Kendrick Lamar, right? So he's literally is on the defense. Drake, I'm saying right now, is literally on the defense talking about uh, trying to clear his name from all this quote unquote, what they saying is fake that Kendrick is saying, right? Even at the end of the record, Drake seemed as if he's done, but we don't know. Well, you know, but it sounded like he was waving his flag, but the way everybody was talking about last night, it's like, it's, even if Drake wanted to wave his flag, I don't think he would be allowed to because it's too much, it's too much uh, negative talk about it. Then I heard Kendrick Lamar still have some more um, stuff in the chamber to shoot at um, Brother Drake, but let's just talk about something different. We ain't gonna talk about the songs per se, even though they don't like us is the banger of the damn year, okay? We ain't gonna talk about how dope that song is and how it's connecting the whole West Coast and the Midwest and even people on the East Coast is loving this song. This is a universal club banger. They're calling it a bop. You know, that's how they talk these days. So this is a, 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 a dope joint. But the thing that's getting me about this whole beef, I mean, about this whole diss, is how people are talking about it for hours in and hours out. That's why I don't spend that much time. I want to give you the the headlines and stuff like that so you can keep going throughout your day. So if you haven't heard about certain things, we here at the Weekly Entertainment News Podcast or Blackwin, Ohio's Global Entertainment News. We give you the headlines so you can keep on going with your day. But I do got a commentary I want to say about this, right? Ready, fight. What does it matter if people lying in the lyrics? I don't... This is entertainment. Since when, damn it, everything got to be so goddamn real that if it's not real, that means the the round wasn't won. Who give a damn? It's shock value. It's, ooh, did you believe he said that? Since when, we've been fine combing and fine tooth combing and looking through the whether or not if this person is real. Now, I know they saying some hellacious things about each other. My man whooping on his wife. My other one is messing with young girls and stuff like that. But this is all fair in war. And when it comes to lyrical war, I don't even know why they even calling this an MC battle when one of the brothers is not the only one that's writing this song. He has a team. So in and, and just with that alone, I'm going to say if, if you're battling a team of writers, I'm going to say it again. If you're battling a team of writers, Okay, I don't even know what's the problem. And if it's not the truth, who gives a damn? It's entertaining and it shocked you when he said it. It's on the other guy to come with something equally as entertainment 
as entertaining. This shit has gotten a little bit too real. And I done seen grown men up all night long defending the MCs as if they have a hired as they have, have a higher position to defend these people and they're not even defending themselves. I'm going to say it again. Drake is not defending himself online all damn like, all day long. Kendrick is not defending himself all day long. He, they, they're dropping music and it's on the, the YouTubers. You know what I'm saying? I know they're making money. They're streaming. This. I get that. But you are being so passionate. Some of these brothers are so passionate. It's as if they work for the damn label or the artist themselves so that's, that's all i'm gonna say about that i can go on days, days and days about it but i don't want to i'm gonna keep it just like that just to give you my thought what i'm thinking about here at um accuratehiphop.com and also in this beef news and we're gonna come back to it but i'll take one more thing it looks like uh cash money president mac main Okay, Young Money's president, Mac Main, you know who Mac Main is. He was a Lil Wayne's right-hand man that helped start and navigate the Young Money MCs. Speaking about Young Money MCs, you do know Drake signed to Lil Wayne as a Young Money artist when he first got his start, okay? So as a result, it's a song that came out, Girls. It's called Every Girl or All the Girls in the World. It came out in 2009 on a compilation with the young art, young money artists featuring. And Mac Main, the president, comes from behind the executive boards to spit a verse. And apparently this Mac Main happens to get on Twitter taken up for the six God. And apparently uh, some people pulled those lyrics from the 2009 song and heard Mac Main himself says, in about a few years, Holler at me, Molly Cyrus. Well, we all know Molly Ray Cyrus was a young girl then. She wasn't quite 18. But Mac Main said, in a couple of years, holler at me, Molly Ray Cyrus. Now, this is all this has been pre printed, distributed, recorded, and sent and sold. Video and all, you can see it. And people are coming at this brother in the damn comment section. Like, bro, you need not to be in the comment section taking up for anybody. You need to shut up. We got some words for you. And we got your own words working against you and the six God. So, brother, pipe down. Okay? At least that's what they were saying. All right. Hey, listen, we're going to come back to some more Drake news. And there's so much stuff we can talk about, talk about. So much Kendrick news. And there's so much stuff we can talk about. But in other news, we're going to talk about all these festivals. Let's talk about it. The Lovers and Friends Fest. Wow. Was canceled due to 60 miles an hour or a projected 60 miles an hour windstorm. Okay. So they're out in Las Vegas, right? And if this is supposed to be the biggest concert of all time, at least that's what it looks like to me. Let me let me show you some names right quick. I wrote some down. You got Usher, Lil Wayne, Mary J. Blige, Elisa Keys, Janet Jackson, TLC, the Backstreet Boys, Sierra, Neo, Monica, Jodeci, Robin Fleck, Escape, Luda, Nas, Snoop Dogg, Red Man, Rick Ross, Fat Joe, Genuine, and a whole bunch of 98 Degrees, everybody, okay? Supposed to be at this damn thing. It's supposed to be a weekend extravaganza, if you will. But the powers that be canceled the fest. So you have people coming from all over the Almanac, brother, all over the damn place. So they spent their money to fly in. They drove in. They had hotels. They got lodging. And people was pissed because these winds is supposed to, because it's an outside festival, these winds were supposed to have been dangerous. Just imagine the big speakers falling on people. So the promoters felt it deemed possible and, and to just pull it off. We need to possibly cancel this thing. And that's what they did. But big ups to Snoop Dogg and our brother T-Pain. Um, they stepped up and because a lot of people was in the wilderness out there in that desert, hot as hell, upset, pissed, okay? So Snoop Dogg and T-Pain stopped at the IU or the AU Day Club at, and, uh, Day Club at Results World and threw an impromptu concert. That's right, Snoop Doogity Dogg and T-Pain through an impromptu concert to, to some of the fans as if they understood that, hey, we understand your anguish. We understand what you're going through. We're still going to be here for you and yours, you know. And then uh, our brother the night before, Usher, did his thing at the Jewels nightclub at the area or the Aria Resort and Casino. What? So these, these people was doing some impromptu stuff. But I'm going to tell you this. Don't think it was just all free love. We're talking about Vegas where money is limitless. So you got this huge concert, understand, has been canceled. And we do know 
that the artist who was booked on the, to, on the show got paid to show up and perform. So they got a nice purse to be there. Now, they probably didn't get the back end because they didn't have to perform. Some of them probably did. But here's what's incredible. Here's what you got to know. While we see people like uh, Snoop Dogg and T-Pain and Usher still stay after the fact and show some love to the people. On, this, on the first thought and first glance, we think these people are showing some love. No, they got a bag. They were there anyway. So they management team, whoever from Usher, you know, Usher already connected with Vegas, Snoop Dogg and T-Pain. T-Pain was already connected with Vegas, okay? They offered them a bag to do a, a little impromptu show at these resorts, and it was a big thing. So big ups to Usher, big ups to Snoop Doobie Dog, and big ups to my brother T-Pain for staying in the game and letting everybody know that it's going to be all right. They're saying they're going to try to do something later. I think next year should be even great. Don't try to force it because everybody's still getting their refunds. So that's a big thing. All right. Speaking about big things, Kim Kardashian in the news. Oh my God. Well, recently she was on the brand new show. It was not a show. It was a hot show on Netflix. It was called The Greatest Roast of All Time. And this was featuring the great, the GOAT of all time, Tom Brady, the quarterback extraordinaire. Okay. So they had all these comedians, Kevin Hart included, uh, Gronk, somebody who used to play with. And they said even Bill Belichick was on the, pe on the podium trying to take shots at my guy, at the, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady. Right. So it was a festive event. It was live on Netflix. Netflix is doing some incredible stuff. So you already know Netflix is doing the, the, the Tyson fight and everything live. So they did this live as well. Right. So check this out. Our girl, Kim Kardashian, gets up to do her little song and dance to try to roast the goat. But they booed our system. Or should I say the system? Have you want to look at it? They booed the lovely girl and booed her so much. She could, it was hard for her to even get the words out as she was trying to get along with her little, her little monologue. And needless to say, it didn't work in her favor. Right. And so. She had to leave off. She was escorted off, if you will, um, with shame. So big ups to uh, Kim that she said she took it with a smile. She understand. But what it showed to me is that a lot of people don't like Kim for some reason or another. A lot of ladies hate on her because of the way she looked. A lot of people hate on her because she got fake body parts. A lot of them say she's a culture vulture. In any event, let's give it up to the people who kept it real at this damn event. And gave her how they really feel. Speaking about how they really feel. Look like my man Jim Jones showed two people how he really feel. Well, it comes down to say that Jim Jones was in the Miami uh, airport or in an airport on his way to Miami or just being landing in Miami. And apparently two people, two guys jumped our brother, right? Okay, apparently he is coming up an escalator. You saw it. If you didn't, I'm giving it to you word by word. Play by play, Jim Jones is going up the escalator, right? And apparently he said he was minding his own business, and these two guys uh, started fighting on him. Jim Jones grabbed one guy, threw him down the damn es I mean, escalator, boom, busted his style wide open. And then as Jim Jones is handling this one guy, another guy come over his back, pummeling, pummeling, and then he got broke up. And apparently Jim Jones was trying to explain to the people they jumped on me. I was just minding my own damn business. Well, it was later um, stated by Jim Jones to uh, TMZ that he was just minding his own business and they picked with him. He's all right. He later showed up on Instagram showing everybody that he was at the party that he was promoting in Miami and everything was uh, greater later. So big ups to Jim Jones and a way to stay in the news again. I don't buy everything that I read in the news, even though I am the news guy. I do believe these people use social media to man to manipulate their brand, to keep their face in the place, their brand at hand. That's what I'm saying. I do believe that it's possible that in some scenarios, people have camera people or phone people standing by for these little publicity stunts so they can be shown and get a little, get their name clocking again in the, in the stratosphere. I'm not saying our brother Jim Jones did that, but I'm just saying people definitely do that. Speaking about what people are doing to keep their name in the in the face or their name in the place and to paint something great so that people can see. It looks like P. Diddy uh -oh. is doing the same thing. 
with the help of T.D. Jakes. That's right. A video comes up on surface over the weekend. P. Diddy weathering the storm, okay? You can see that P. Diddy is trying to say in so many words with this short little promo video that the storm is coming, but I am God body and I am standing in the storm weathering it because I was made for this. And not only that, uh, I understand that this too shall pass. And this piece of propaganda this piece of marketing is letting you know why you listening to the beef between two people. You know what I'm saying? While you enjoying the back and forth of the beef and the entertainment, you are slightly forgetting that P. Diddy is standing in the face of the storm and his two show path. I believe this is just a piece of propaganda to get you to know that this whole P. Diddy thing is going to come to an end quietly. It's going to dissipate. So keep your eyes on the prize. Let people know that you really know what's going on in this particular position. We are conscious to stuff and we're not just just wrapped up in foolishness all the damn time. Speaking about foolishness all the time, how about some of the time? Meek Mill just seems like he don't want to let it go. Surprise! Right? It looks like him, he and his Sixers, because you know he's from Philly, took a loss at the playoff game this past weekend. That's, that's right. New York took it to our brothers, the Sixers. Unfortunately, it looks like someone took it to, uh, more than just someone, some ones took it to our brother Meek Mill's outfit. As you can see, this brother wearing a skin-tight see-through shirt with some black shorts. And they're saying stuff like, in on Twitter, bruh, you, you making it hard for me to ride with you with all this zestiness you showing. You showing all this zestiness with this shirt showing your nipples and all types of foolishness. Come on, man. Now you know what I'm talking about. This man knew exactly what type of response he was going to get with this damn outfit. He knew it. At the end of the day, he ain't said nothing, but he knows this is going to keep his brand at hand, his face in the place. These people ain't stupid. That's what this thing is made for. Okay? Keep it up. Okay, listen, it's time to pour the tea. Pour the tea, God damn it. Pour the tea. All right. It looks like our brother Jeezy is claiming that the only reason why his ex ladies or soon to be ex wife, Jeannie Ma, is smearing his name is because he don't want to have another baby with her. Oh. Okay, now I hate to talk about this stuff like this, but at the end of the day, it's in the news. I'm going to say it again. Jeezy said the only reason why his lady is trying to say he's physically abusive on at least one occasion and he's not a good guy is because the girl wants to have another baby with him. And Jeezy says, hell no, I don't want to have a baby with you. You're not, you know, I don't want to do that. And he says... It is the truth because he's can bear witness because she's been going to the um, IVF specialist to help the process take place. Those of you who don't know what IVF specialist is and what they do, they help a person uh, with birthing the baby. Some people don't have, some people have unnatural causes on why they can't give birth, and so they need extra added help to have a natural to. to to conceive a baby naturally. And that's what these IVF specialists are doing. So big ups to Jeezy for coming out and saying the truth that, hey, I just don't want to procreate with this, with this heifer no more. So it is what it is. That's the T, man. Speaking about that, D with the T, y'all. D with the T one more time. It looks like, oh, no, pull the goddamn T again. This is the T fest. Pull the T. It looks like our beloved sister, Ice Spice, is blasted by her former friend, for calling Nicki Minaj some choice names. Ready, I'm going to say it again. It looks like Ice Spice's friend. Let's call Ice Spice's friend Baby Storm. Listen, this is what's happening. Okay, you get a hater. Somebody hates like this Baby Storm girl. I'm going to call her a hater. Yeah, because that's what I read, right? She is a, a, a soon-to-be rapper. She's rapping, but she haven't popped yet. And apparently she's a, she was once a good friend of Ice Spice. So she has some conversations with Ice Spice that friends have. So apparently it looks like a based on this here text or this expose that Baby Storm put out against our girl, Ice Spice. She said that, hey, she, far as um, Ice Spice, called Nicki Minaj ungrateful and delusional. What you talking about, Brother Hiram? What you talking about? Okay, it's, she's simply saying Ice Spice has said when that song Barbie came out, the company got in touch with me to do the song. She said, what I did was extend an uh, 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 olive branch to our beloved sister Nicki Minaj because that Barbie is her brand and I think it would be a good joint, which is why you see Barbie and Nicki Minaj together. And she uh, ironically calls uh, Nicki Minaj delusional and ungrateful. 
but that was a conversation. Apparently, if she did it, that was a conversation between her and her friend. But apparently, um, Baby Storm put it all on Inst not Instagram, but Twitter. And now Nicki Minaj got a hold to it. And she tweeted some choice cuts that wasn't that nice. She said, good morning, Barb, as promised. This is how ISIS really feels about your queen. Nicki Minaj says, ungrateful, delusional. Just like y'all, just want y'all to know. That this ain't the only time the lovely girl or the hater friend, Baby Storm, has tried to hate on your girl. It looks like she's been hating for a minute, and it dates back um, back into April the 27th. See, this is the part where I need a lady giving y'all this lady tea, okay? Because this is ridiculous. Apparently, at the end of the day, uh, she says about our lovely sister, Ice Spice, that she was only friends with another girl, uh, Cleo, short for Cleopatra, because Cleopatra was a sister, a dark sister, okay? And she said the only reason why she was kicking it with her is to help people see her as being an African-American girl. Now, I might have put a little extra sauce in it, but that's what she damn near said. And that's what she said. So, big ups. If you want some more tea, get in touch with the Reporter Newspaper, online.com, and you will read that. Speaking about the Reporter Newspaper, online.com, one more time, without them, this would not be a fact that I would not be sitting up here giving you all this news. This is a fun thing I love doing. I think it's great because I write articles as well. So, basically, what I'm doing is giving you all the information that I'm going to in turn make some type of article with that I do every other week or every week, depending on how I feel like writing. And you can find all my articles in the Reporter Newspaper in a tangible form, or you can go to the Reporter Newspaper online.com and get the hip hop journalist, your brother Hiram Makin, and you can understand where I'm coming from. Speaking about understanding where I'm coming from, it looks like little baby. Didn't really understand where his artist was coming from, Dirty Tay. Looks like our brother Dirty Tay have received 17 years in prison for accidentally shooting a toddler in the head. What? Oh my God. So it looks like our brother, little baby from the ATL, okay, signed a murderer. Okay, let's tell you what happened. Apparently, uh, the father of the little boy and the little boy was caught at an intersection. Bullets was flying, and they putting it on our brother, uh, the rapper brother, uh, Dirty Tay. Dirty Tay gets to his um, Instagram stories and trying to say stuff like, uh, they putting this all on me, they putting this all on me, and it ain't really my fault and all this stuff. So he said he's denied his involvement in the shooting in a post on his Instagram stories, right? He says, I'm innocent in the news. But uh, it's not always right. They're always trying to bash me. And these allegations are not necessarily mine. OK, but according to the Atlanta Journal Constitution, police arrested the 24 year old Dirty Tay, whose real name is Contavious Wright, during a traffic stop on August the 19th, 2002 and booked him into the Fulton County Jail on a dozen of counts. Uh, the charges include criminal attempt to commit murder aggravated assault, first degree cruelty to her children, and three counts of committing offenses listed in Georgia street gang terrorism and prevention act with the intent to gain membership or increase his status in the criminal gang. God damn. What, what, what the hell? We, we wilding. So at any rate, they went to court and he had been found guilty uh, and he, he basically he took a plea deal because he was looking at murder. I mean, looking at um, the death penalty. So he got 17 years for the accidental death. OK, so uh, at this time, our our brother, little baby, had no comment. He didn't say anything about the sentencing. So we're going to let that be that. Speaking about the sentencing. We've been talking about NBA young boys legal woes. OK, and they obviously have gotten worse. We already know he was in trouble for his illegal prescription drug fraud case okay let's go uh we already know that and we definitely know that um my brother he, he got some added charges to the style he, he have definitely got some added charges to the to the style one of them and let me see if i can find it here it says the controversial rapper has now had more charges added to his sheet, including including possession of a firearm by a restricted person and two counts of obtaining a prescription without permission, 
Okay. And you already know all the other accounts. My man got 63 counts relating to identity fraud, forgery, obtaining a prescription under false pretenses, possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person, a pattern of unlawful activity and possession of a controlled sub substance. It looks like our brother, the NBA young boy is going to learn a valuable lesson trying to do what he got to do to come up or to get the bag. Speaking about get the bag, let's get back to I'm here. The, um, because I know that's what y'all here for. Let's get back to the um, big beef. Okay, let's 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 talk about it. I told you, it's a lot of stuff I want to touch on, but I don't want to just put it all up in one particular part of the show to where you think I'm just feeding you nothing but um the dr the beef. But here we go. We look like our brother Gilly the Kid come out of nowhere and says. Game over. He think Drake won. Now, people are wondering, like, what the hell? Why is Gilly so strong? You know who Gilly is. Okay, you do. He's from the hit uh, podcast. I love his podcast, him and his cousin, man, a million dollars worth of game. But people are saying, how in the hell can he be so aggressive with his his, his judging this match on who who on how uh, K Dot lost his match to um our brother Drake? Well, we do know that uh, Gilly the Kid, some are saying he's only doing this so he can get a interview with Drizzy himself. But I'm here to tell you, don't act like you don't know that uh, Gilly the Kid is connected to cash money. God damn. Don't act like you don't know he's down. He once upon a time was down with young money. Don't act like that. So he's biased. Okay. Big ups. He's biased. He, he's a real MC too. I mean, I'm not saying that Drizzy ain't a real MC, but come on. Now, this is at this point, it's preference. So big ups to my man Gilly the Kid for wearing his love and his heart on his sleeve. But this has been at this point is ridiculous. All right. Speaking about something that's ridiculous, we're going to keep with this beef. OK. And then like Metro Boomin, the St. Louis producer who's instrumental behind this whole beef. OK. Put out a song called BBL Drizzy. That's right. He put out an instrumental. Now, a lot of people are saying he's not that instrumental because he's been talking with production. Okay, he's been making the beat say shit. Well, on this particular song, he's literally making mockery. I don't know how in the hell he got this sample making it sound like it's a 1970s sample over this robust, thick beat. But he said, hey, listen, I got a contest. It is broken. It got the song is broken down like a real song. It got a hook on the damn thing singing BBL Drizzy. You know what BBL mean. Talking about our brother Drake's um, uh, alleged plastic surgery to make him look right, like he looking all okay. So they making mockery on the song. So this is a diss. And our brother Metro Boomin, the producer behind everything, the one that makes all the music, he says anybody can get on his beat. And the winner of this competition is going to get a free beat compliments of the Platinum Plus producer. Big ups to hip hop. Hip hop's winning. The culture is winning, okay? All right. And now we're about to get into my favorite part of the show. This part of the show, I call it the conscious content. This is that knowledge you can't get in college. This is that insight for your invite. And this is something that means a lot to me. What's up, everybody? It's Joe Crack. What's up, man? It's your boy, Zoe Dollars. So I say everybody out there, and so we've been talking about Haiti, it's time to raise donations for Haiti. Yep. We came together uh, with Food for the Poor organization that's been in Haiti for many, many years. And all we're trying to do is feed the people, get some women's hygiene, get some kids' pampers. You'll see we'll have a Ooh, list of our Amazon it. food and perishable goods. Uh, Definitely got a lot of uh, uh, drop off location here in Miami. South uh, Florida. Saturday, May 4th. Right, Food for the Poor Warehouse, and that's um, at 6401 Lions Road, Coconut Creek, Florida. Florida. And you can show up from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're more than welcome to pull up, drop off some supplies. <laughs> Listen, I ain't going to make no mistakes. I ain't going to make no secret about it. I believe that we as a people are all connected, okay? I'm saying it again. That's why you see that red, black, and green behind me. That's that Pan-African unity. Pan-African means that if you are of African descent, no matter where you at, you can be anywhere. 
We believe that we are connected. We believe that we are family and we believe that we need to look out for each other. Listen, for the reporter newspaper for AkronHipHop.com, I am your brother, Brother Hiram King. Y'all better feel me before they kill me. Peace. Niggas out the porch, niggas in Paris. Somebody the yeah, J version, boss hold Jay Harden, but they think they the highest. We locking them up, you get caught with the smoke, get your flame dark. And they shoot a shot, but I ain't far. This fuck around here, the same target, back to back.